We're delighted to have you back to this program, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. This is the 239th time, and you're way past our 19,000th viewer, which we appreciate. And we're broadcasting uh, from the opposite ends of the world with uh, back in Honolulu, Hawaii, you, Martin Anzolini from Colombia, the country of, and having joined us nearing about a year ago uh, here in Hawaii. And from Hawaii, our DeSoto Brown from his Ossipoff design home, as we see, because we see the doggy in the back. And of course, we have with us our founding uncle and producer, Jay Fidel. Uh, thanks to him, we can all do that. So this is the, and we have me, Martin Despang, by the way. I'm on this other end of the world because you guys are pretty close to each other. And I'm near Munich and I came from the Tegernsee, which is a crystal clear alpine lake. And today we have to put things into context. When we talk about things, we want to talk about performance based on human thermal comfort, experience, what we need as human beings. And this is one of the nights that are close to the ones that we always have in Hawaii. We maybe have two handfuls of these here in Germany. So people, you know, celebrate that and they don't want to go to sleep because they're thinking there's only so few of them. The city we're going to is Barcelona. That is somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's not getting, uh, you know, it's not getting cold as it gets here. There's no frostbite, there's no freezing, there's no below 32 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. Um, but it's also not going to be, you know, as paradisal as it is in Hawaii, why we are all there. Um, and, and I will return soon for that matter uh, as well. So, but it's, it's as close as we can... Uh, and we don't have um, alpine lakes in Barcelona. We don't need because we have the ocean. We also have mountains in the back and we have a climate that is not unsimilar. And that's why we started to send us to um, Barcelona through J in 1965, uh, U Martin in 2008. We sent me in 2021 and now this year again and U de Soto we yet have to send. So that's the way that's that's our background, right? And so now we're finishing up the most obvious because um, uh, Barcelona actually has towers, high rises, skyscrapers, way fewer than we have in Honolulu. But in these past, this including five shows, we have to admit all of them are much better than the ones we have. And sort of ironically, but also makes us optimistic if we want so, uh, several of us remind us of the ones we had and some of them we luckily still have, you as a historian, the Soto and us in Doko Momo. So we said we should just return to what we had. But one thing that we talked about with, with UJ after the show is what, what's, the, what's the sort of the, the framework, the circumstances, what would us make, uh, you know, do great towers again or at all? And this is uh, that first slide and the key word that could be uh, a recipe for success is competitions, architectural competitions. And I pass this on to you, Martin, because you put the slide together to please talk about that. Yeah, so very briefly is uh, we see there the, the stadium of Barcelona football club, very famous where Messi started uh, and played his whole career. Uh, when I was there, that competition took place. Norman Foster won. Uh, 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 we were also talking about all other competitions. All these buildings, these four images that you see there were competitions. Uh, Enrique Miralles, Catalan uh, architect for the Mercado Santa Catarina that we already talked about. Uh, also the, the, the complex of apartments uh, at the former stadium of, of uh, Espanol. Again, in Barcelona, it was a huge competition. And the same Villa Olimpica that we were also talking about, the whole uh, uh, urban plan and, and, the, and the blocks and the buildings themselves, they were all like somehow multi-scale competition, which is very interesting. Uh, 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 on, the, on the right, we see, we can talk about that in another moment, uh, that uh, back in Colombia, we also have that culture of competitions. No, uh, Just that book is all like, 250 pages book of competitions that have taken place in Colombia in, in the last century. Many projects, the, the Republican projects, so neoclassic period, 
modernistic. Nowadays, every competition I had, I was lucky uh, to be part of, of many juries uh, uh, previously before coming to Hawaii. And it is a very dem democratic exercise uh, on which architects have a voice. No? Uh, uh, and uh, at the end of the process, at the end of the, of the competition, we already have a preliminary project that is useful for the city or for the promoter of the, even the, the the private developer because it also happens privately as as you see in the in the top right uh, like sheets it is, this is just the amount of work that you do for a competition in this case it is, it was the, the faculty of music of a of a of a university back in Colombia no it was a competition we were a, like a small team there were 60 60 teams uh, competing so in that sense, it's like the good part of capitalism, competition uh, uh, in the good sense, uh, but also the good part of democracy, no? It's like giving the opportunity to, to small studios as ours in that case, to, to get a big project uh, as it happened in that case, no? Uh, then the bigger images, uh, image of, of, of that slide, the, the uh, uh, Politecnico de Catalunya, the Sab Escuela, um, uh, Técnica uh, uh, Superior de Arquitectura de Barcelona. Uh, it is a, uh, actually, it is a very interesting building as a building. Poder was the, the architect that won the competition for the remodeling of that, uh, uh, of that building, the lower part, uh, which is very interesting in terms of how it gets illuminated and so on. Uh, it is very present. Many of these competitions are curated by the ETSAP. They, they have a voice, you know? they put the juries, they they settle down the the the, the basis so the, the the requirements for the competition itself so there is a, a whole again democratic public discussion process along the design of the requirements for the competition that will get published for the architects to compete no uh, I think that could be great for Honolulu we we have seen what is happening uh, at UH like I, I don't want to to, to get there but. Uh, uh, the quality of the buildings that, that are being built actually around the Faculty of Architecture, no? Uh, 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 and, uh, and, uh, and what is happening in general with public projects, no? That could have been with the economical resources and the great architects that we have here, we are missing an opportunity of bringing an amazing architecture. And sometimes it could be Norman Foster's, no? Uh, uh, which is good some, sometimes to have like a, a high level architect, but also and mainly local firms that are that are trying to thrive that have a, a lot of uh, uh, ideas and they, they are willing to work no they work a lot the, the uh, just to finish the 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 quality of the projects that we have had now the i was jury during like four years like five years or seven years ago uh, more or less these buildings are, are already built enormous buildings uh, it was a very successful exercise no? Uh, uh, at the end of the of the of the equation, let's say. So again, a defense for architectural competition. <laughs> Let me just add something to that. That this is fascinating. That that you're you're describing this because the only competition that I can remember ever occurring locally was for the redevelopment of the docks around Aloha Tower, and that was in the 1990s. And because that's government property it was something that the government then could have a competition for rather than it being purely a private development. And two things I remember from that. One was that the amount of money that each of the entrants had to put into their presentation was very high. And in fact, one of the losers complained about that when he didn't get the contract. He then said, Hawaii is too small for me, I'm leaving and left. But that unfortunately meant that only wealthy or large companies could even compete in the first place. And the second place, unfortunately, was that uh, the second aspect of this, unfortunately, ultimately, it was not successful. It was not sustainable economically. And it, it, it today has been taken over by Hawaii Pacific University in the for most of the of the complex, because it was not successful as a retail development. However, it is fascinating to me that you're saying that such competitions are common in other countries for, for large projects, 
because as I say, I only remember it happening here one single time and that's it. And it's it's about time. And this uh, next slide here is that we talked about this before De Soto, and we did here with uh, Matt Noblet from Danish Architecten, who that is ingrained in their in their in their psyche of their thinking. They don't want to be picked, uh, you know, by someone. Uh, they want to have the competition, as you said, Martin, as a backbone that you can then claim and saying, hey, there was a there was an esteemed jury and was a blind, you know, decision. It was not name dropping. It was not auntie and uncle, which I, if I'm not mistaken, happens a lot in uh, Hawaii, uh, DeSoto and, and Jay. And so uh, it is not, it is all very official. And you can then, you know, say, hey, I want this competition. So I insist that, you know, it, it gets built that way. And we, we talked about the very shameful for me in my culture, actually the, the second from the, the right um, uh, picture there. Um, this is by uh, Florian Nagler, who actually just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the chance, this is on, on my side here. Uh, that is the model of the, of, the, of the competition for when we had the expo in 2000. And uh, of course, we were the host, right? So we wanted to have the best comp the best pavilion to show, you know, to host people. So we made this an international competition, a local young upcoming Martin, as you said, this is the chance for not the guys who already got all the accolades and all the reputation and stuff, you know, and say, oh, I know, right? So no one can do better. Another thing that happens a lot in Hawaii, if not all the time, right? There's the big ones, the big firms, and they say, only we know, you little guys, you know, you can't know. That's not the case. So he was just straight out of school, very young, won that competition, and it ended up tragically. The picture to the to the right here on on this on on the next one here, is then when finally we as a culture, uh, basically, you know, shot ourselves in our own knee because we were dysfunctional in terms of knowing what the program will be and stuff like that. And at the end, uh, Florian basically then um, you know they 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 split you know the federal government and him as a young upcoming architect and uh, a guy stepped in who was trained as an architect but decided to be a developer for himself and he built the self-acclaimed largest spa slash sea world in the in the world which is here in munich we once did a show about that De Soto. he unfortunately you know uh, came down with a plane and is not amongst us anymore on earth. But um, he stepped in and did a pavilion that was a shame. We were all so ashamed because it was just nothing of any, because it wasn't, you know, it was just money. It was capital concentration, Jay, as you say, he said, oh, I have the, I have the power, I can do it. But he didn't have the brain. And, you know, Florian and I were joking and saying, well, you know, maybe for a good reason, otherwise we wouldn't be here. He wouldn't be in Munich, a professor, and I wouldn't be in Hawaii if, you know, our, our that town, which happens to be my hometown, didn't always show to be the most, you know, broad minded. The the what, what because we came out of it with uh, the expo tram stations that we talked about it and at the top left is uh, is a show quote from last time about that one station that has this sort of diaphanous double metal mesh and and same thing in many shows we talked about it because it was a competition you know we were able to 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 pull it through so both reasons you know we were saying competitions are great. And uh, also, uh, you know, we talked about Foster and this tower that maybe um, could be the most suitable for when we rethink towers for Honolulu um, is this um, um, telecommunication tower that was built uh, along one of these main events, which was the Olympics that we just concluded in Paris. Um, and this was in Barcelona in 1992. So just like the expo in 2000, right? These are the events that could help, um, of course, getting, um, you know, some uh, beacons, as you said, Martin, but I looked this up and, you know, you guys always do more homework than we do. Uh, because we talked after the show, I looked it up, I sh we should have looked it up before, and this tower is a result of a competition as well. So it was not like Barcelona said, okay, we get Starchitect Foster, right? he had to compete with all the others and he won this as as the best um as the best idea and that's the the message you know we want to 
we want to talk about. Tectonically, or actually the absence of it, that's why we're going this way. This reminds Jay of here is with George Kaysen several years ago. These are the primitivas, which is provocative food for thought to say, why won't, don't we build high rises differently? Because our climate is so different. If you're interested, watch that show. There's a couple of Q&A shows after that. This here, thanks to you, the soda you gave to me as the German. And uh, this talks about, you know, the, the fascination with, with Hawaii, not just as a natural environment, but also as, as a built environment. And it certainly was the case in mid-century with all these buildings. We talked about the Ala Moana building that UJ fell in love with your sweetheart and, and all these stories about human event and activity in buildings. But this has been on the decline and, you know, hopefully it's a low point now. We need to get it back up. But you shared this with me, which is interesting because it's a magazine from my culture that you had archived and you sent to me. And so please, you now talk about it. What do you think what it actually is? Well, this is a, a travel magazine from Germany and the entire issue is about Hawaii. And I can't remember, this is from the 1980s. And uh, I am a collector of all kinds of ephemera, meaning paper printed material about the Hawaiian islands. And back in the 80s, uh, I got a copy of this, and I don't even remember how or why it was available here. In any case, uh, this is something, Martin, I've wanted to send to you for a long time. And finally, I took a few photographs of it when I dug it out of my collection. And one of the things that struck me back then was this double page spread. And even though I can't speak German, I did was able to understand Honolulu, the Manhattan of the South Seas, which of course we're not in the South Seas, we're in the North Pacific, but regardless of that, the thing that struck me at the time was uh, I could understand a European magazine being intrigued by the idea of uh, a, an American style city on a tropical island, but I did not know at that time that Germans have a kooky fascination with Hawaiian islands. But I thought also, in the, as seen in the previous picture, that why would they be intrigued by a bunch of high rises? Because I thought, well, there are lots of big cities in Germany, particularly Berlin. They must have lots of high rises, never having been there. And I still have never been there. And absolutely, that is not the case, because Martin, after you and I became friends, you informed me that there's only one city in Germany that has any high rises to speak of. And so a city of high rises with palm trees as well to Germans was kind of an amazing concept. So this is something I've been educated in because I naturally assumed that big cities all over the world had lots of high rises. Well, many of them do, but many of the cities in Europe do not. So in that respect, Honolulu is not more modern, but it's certainly a lot more densely uh, urbanized with more high rises than many other cities are, particularly in Germany and, and in Europe, where there's much more of an awareness of historic buildings, the preservation of historic buildings, et cetera. We didn't have that legacy here, so we were able to build on open spaces from open space to high rise or one story buildings to high rises, which happened in a very fast, uh, pace starting in the 1960s. And so here I see that um, you've, you've, uh, there's an English translation of what this says. Is that correct? Which is fascinating because yeah. I've never known what it said. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, I used to give you your ger weekly German lessons. Right. I waved this this week here. And okay. It for all you guys. And it's interesting because the 80s, we like to put things in the zeitgeist context. That's that adopted word that you guys adopted from my culture. And it means what was going on. So the early 80s, I mean, this, this sort of nearing mid 80s, with the exception of our dear uh, mid-century modern master, Ron Lindgren, who Bill Chapman once rightly so said, he is the best postmodern architect because his says Kali Kolani is from that year and he resisted postmodernism. But otherwise, this was the beginning of the, uh, the dilemma we're continuing to be in. I, I believe we're still, and Martin, we talked about it, we're still in postmodernism. It just dresses differently. And so here, 
is this magazine who does it does a pretty good job in actually depicting great pictures great it gives you really the feeling of tropical exotic right you look at the picture everything looks lush and green and sunsetty and all this stuff right but the text so you might think this is just an uncritical celebration of oh there's an american city you know and it happens to be in the tropics no it's not i was really surprised that's why i translated it for you guys here to read that text that it's very critical and in fact of what you just said well since you know hawaii doesn't have that tradition history of what you know martin your culture has and barcelona has and, and germany has but relatively speaking there's buildings you know in downtown there were buildings maybe many more buildings that were old in hawaiian terms and then this here basically criticizes the and this is not a word in german nor it is in english the concretization i made this up as they made it up betonisierung when she means you just you know concrete you know you pour concrete over and over again so it takes a very very critical kind of stand on it and um so that being said that was in the 80s and you know so meaning the 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 customer right the tourist and a magazine that depicts it, right, was already getting less excited about Honolulu. So that was in the 80s, and now things haven't improved for the better. That's why we're all doing this here. So let's spend the last eight to 10 minutes about how we get the spirit back up. That's what we traditionally do in shows, but with what? And maybe we're onto something to say, maybe towers aren't actually the solution at all. What about there is something else? And this is a picture from you, Martin, again in 2008, where there's actually one tower, a little tower. But if you put this uh, into context and you make many more of this, this is uh, when we visited uh, Joey and Clara in 2021. This is where they stayed. Uh, this is a typical uh, flat um, a unit that you can see you have a floor to ceiling. Uh, you know, window um, uh, 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 door, and this is how that stuff looks from the outside. And the whole urban fabric is is like that. Then there is variations to that theme that makes it interesting. So not everything, unlike like in the old GDR or in the Soviet Union, where it was like rubber stand, right? And it came of a catalog and it was all prefabbed. This is all custom made, you know, these are all different in, in their in their detailing. You did a great show about cast iron, you know, guardrails. You can see there's similar stuff there. And uh, and this is how that looks elevationally, um, as you see. There's also street, there's also green in the streets, right? So uh, that that's been taken care of. And here comes a very, a very interesting from these lanais, from these balconies that they have plenty of. There's a very simple trick that has such a powerful impact on uh, public life. And uh, Jay, you talk about the, um, what's the umbrella from that? The, the Cinsano, okay, the Cinsano, and obviously we're in, in French here, so we have to use other, other brands, right? The Estrella, uh, <laughs> Estrella Dam, uh, you know, umbrella. What they do is that in, in plan, and if we go to the next slide, we see this better, you cut the corners of each intersection of each block uh, by 45 degree. And what you create is then spaces and places for human activity and event. And here's dear Clara showing us her beautiful back and Joey there. And they're sitting in, in this scenario, right? Where there is the Cinsano or a, like, you know, umbrella, there is the public life. And we promised, you know, to the audience, we will actually do a special show dedicated to that subject matter. Because Jay, you just said before the show, why in the world can Europeans and all these other cultures, Latin cultures, figure this out, and we Americans just can't? So, you know, what's uh, what's the solution uh, to that? And and uh, myself, you know, I grew up in that fabric. We talked about that. This is the uh, they call this in urban planning the 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 urban perimeter block. So we call this block Randbebauung. So the, the urban block goes to the edge of, of the, the street. So there isn't a boulevard. There isn't a lot of width there, right? It's, it's rather tight. 
but it's able to fit what they today call the, the complete streets. So you can actually walk there, you can bicycle there, you can walk your dog, you can even park your car there, right? And there's trees there. So there is space and place for everything. But the beauty, and so it creates this very vibrant, you know, fabric. Uh, and we can debate, you know, with how many cars and with, you know, how few. But the beauty can, that you can see here is within the block, this is where it's very even more green and very lush and very quiet, right? So you have kind of a public side of your dwelling and you have a private side. And this is what these courtyards, courtyards, very familiar to Soto. We discovered that there is an underlying genetic code at UH of the good buildings having courtyards and the bad buildings don't have that anymore. So the courtyard is also a very sort of intercultural theme, right? Shangri-La, by the way, is all courtyarded, right? So it also works in Hawaii fairly well climatically. So it's something that's, you know, in one way or the other familiar to all of us uh, in a certain way. And so we want to, this is the closing slide and is the one whose feet these are has to close the show because that's you, Martin. And once again, that's you in 2008. So tell us what is so exciting about, we already see the hammock. We know that the soda, right? Because you use that as a booster for your project for Lahaina, which is by the way, now nearing its um, anniversary in terms of nearing a year when it happened. When you came to us, Martin, and kicked in, and the hammock became a big theme or a big um, motivation for you. So, share in your own words because you lived there. Joe and Clara were there for a couple months, um, but you were there for a year, right? Was it a year? Yeah, yeah, a year. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was. I mean, the building in front was the building where Picasso became Picasso. He entered there. Uh, painting as a as a master and and went out painting as a kid. <laughs> 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 and just the building beside, just in front of, I mean, to, on the on the left of, the, of of me in that picture was the cabaret where Picasso painted um, uh, the Le Demoiselle d'Avignon, the, the painting, the very famous painting of the of the women, naked women with with masks. So it is vibrant, and this space was right in the middle of Barcelona. Uh, actually, it is the downtown. We were also already talking about that. Is that uh, there were many people living there, as I did, uh, as a somehow as a digital uh, kind of a uh, as a kind of short-term resident or 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 tourist student tourist, and so we could we could give uh, a tag to that kind of living. Also, people that were living there for the, the, during their whole life, tourists and people working there, working uh, in any kind of services like contemporary services, but also like a very old uh, brewery that was selling beer since uh, 400 years ago. <laughs> no, there are restaurants. There, there is the re the first restaurant in Barcelona where the mariners came to to eat fish uh, and, and eat meat after their long trips. So uh, just the, the, what I want to bring to this image is that uh, um, first, to keep life in the downtown, there is this idea of like making livable spaces. Uh, it happened in Villa Olimpica. It is a very new development. It was a top down, let's, let's say a planned development, which is good. Planning is good, uh, uh, but still is today uh, a, a, a development that is alive. No, there is people living there, Beer, bread, salt, and salt at the ground floor, which is which is great. No people walking, people cycling. Of course, people with cars, which is normal and uh, and necessary in some cases. But but it is not just a a, a, a like a dormitory city. And then the Lanai, we can keep talk, we should keep talking about the the these open spaces, which could be covered, could be coverable, so uh, openable and closable. Uh, and and could, be, uh, could also be like looking to to have uh, each person should have the right of a little bit of sky, no? Uh, so being there with the hammock, reading, or just resting, having a drink, uh, uh, it is part of again of the most uh, let's say vernacular, the most traditional Hawaiian life, uh, but also uh, uh, could be brought to contemporary life, no? 
Absolutely. We're at the end of our show time, so we have to cut it off here. But um, if you find this very interesting, as we do, obviously, there will be more uh, because uh, next week, um, uh, Jay, you sent me to uh, the the culture that's very close. It's actually neighboring and um, they actually have some kind of competition going on, uh, which is Portugal. I mean, the Spanish and the Portugal have a little thing going on in terms of arguing and <laughs> but um, we will send me there. We have been there at DeSoto. We went to Madeira and we went to Porto. So we will go further down there to uh, Lisbon like the, the Algarve and I will report from there. So I will use the rest of the time uh, for that. And when we're back, uh, likely on the 26th, uh, then we will have another guest with us who is Pedro. And Pedro, I met in Barcelona when I was there last time. And Pedro also teaches at the Polytechnicum there. Which, so he's an educator and a practicator at the same time. And we thought we'd kick off with these public spaces because uh, before we walk back into buildings, which we also need, um, and we will shed a light on affordability, which is the biggest issue we have in Hawaii. Um, uh, a good uh, living space and place for little people uh, and all the people. And they really, we talk about it all the time. There's good ambitions and Stanley Chang sends us his newsletter on Wednesdays, but we don't see anything happen. In Barcelona, it's just like fireworks. It's so fascinating. And we sent me out to cover that, get, get footage of that. But before we go back into building, let's stay sort of outside and really look at how they get these uh, public spaces and places done. And Santa Candelina market, we will look at, you know, we mentioned it a couple of times already. We will look at it a little closer and and several other things to learn from. So look forward to that. See you back for that. And until then, stay happy and healthy and uh, enjoy the summer. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.